I don't know if I should even be writing this. Maybe it'd be better if all this just died with me. But I thought you should know about your family. And the history you're a part of. Though to be honest, I feel as lost as you probably do right now. I think the people in these stories believed them, for what that's worth. Okay, if I stumbled straight to the ending of this, she might not have gone out of the basement. history of imagination and stubbornness and madness any of it seems possible I think we've been surrounded by death for so long we've just gotten used to it what kind of family finishes building a cemetery before starting the house? It's embarrassing for me to admit this, but... The pet cemetery may be more uncomfortable than the human one. Three <clears throat> of the gerbils were mine, and two had been my fault. So, we've got Zerpy, Murpy, Furpy, Chirpy, Burpy... Derby and Derby Junior. Okay. Shatsy. Bob. Sven built the house, but it was Edie who designed the cemetery. I'm sure Odin's monument had been Edie's idea. My mom was always trying to move on, but for Edie, the past never went away. She could see it poking out of the water at low tide. Edie said she dreamed about the old house every night. Edie's side was always easier for me to understand. But the older I get, the more I can see where my mom was coming from. Her dad had been pretty strict, but it wasn't enough to save her brothers. She was just trying to do better. She lost two of her brothers, just like I did. I get why she tried so hard to protect us. We never found Milton's body, 
So my mom insisted we were putting up a monument, not a tombstone. There's so many things I wish I could ask my mom now. Part of me thinks this is what she wanted all along. For me to come back someday and find everything out for myself. But looking back on it now, If she told me there was going to be so much climbing, <laughs> I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, Christ. I never met Grandpa Sam, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. They were both pretty intense. Yeah. Sam spent his life shooting photos, but mom said he got nervous being in front of the camera. I guess we're all afraid of something. Instead of hiding from death, Sam seemed to go out of his way to meet it. I wish I could turn a better resolution on this. It could hopefully be that Stan Lee. Dawn, I promise you'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are going to last a lifetime. Am I gonna have to shoot anything? It's a hunting trip, Don. Shooting is strongly encouraged. Not quite. Shouldn't we be leaving? Just wanna get a shot of you, Don, then we can take off. What? Perfect. Ah, there we go. It's gonna rain the whole weekend, isn't it? Never forget this weekend, Dad. That's the spirit. Okay, got it. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. Hmm. Definitely should not have drunk all that coffee. Hey! <laughs> That's a keeper. I'm just saying, I'm not always gonna be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff, if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was going to be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. I know, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't been out here in 20 years. Last time I was with my brother Calvin. Man, that was a great trip. Don, don't you think you could find something more interesting to photograph? I don't know. Your grandpa Sven taught us how to fish. How to build a fire. We found an old logging trail. There were deer everywhere. Dad! 
good eyes, Don. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of you. Dad, I... I... Just breathe. Turn off. Let me get behind you. Do I have to do this? Don, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to survive, you'll need to be strong. Great shot, Don! <laughs> I'm proud of you, Don. Always remember that, okay? Okay. Oh, right. Sorry, Don, just gotta reset the timer. Oh, right. well, I didn't know that. Dad, it's twitching. I think That's it's totally so normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about. Dad! Ah! Holy shit! Uh... <laughs> Fuck you. Of all these stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. Because it was funny. I mean, it was also sad for his daughter. But... That made me laugh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> ah, revenge of the deer. After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot. This is gonna be sad. Oh fuck. Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. Gregory, it's time to... Hold on, sweetie. Oh. Hello? Sam, I told you I don't want to talk right now. I wonder what he saw. Ah! Probably gonna catch them ducks. <laughs> This world was like.
Alright. Okay. I know how silly it sounds. But I worried about a baby being too happy. But I can feel him slipping away. Sorry about that, Gregory. I know you did everything you could. Maybe if I hadn't called that night. Damn it. Hold on, I don't want Gregory to hear this. I wish you could have told us about the world we saw. There's so much I don't understand about Gregory, about everything. Sam. I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry, and yet... A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. Father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I I now remember. pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride.
time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign held up his middle finger. Well, fly like kite, because there ain't nothing more punk than flying a kite. up and panicked geese appeared and quickly went but all the humans did that day was go inside the tent oh god so you can get Benjamin Franklin The rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power, but all my father said to this was, Make the music louder! I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. She never talked about him, but mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. Be a baby, Greg. Yeah, Greg. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. And to see kids in the house again. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. And for a while, Things were good, almost normal. But it didn't last. Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. I 
as you do. I think Edie was happy to finally have another painter in the family. Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. Oh, I am just very slowly moving my mouse to the left. All right. I was four when Milton disappeared. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Everyone always told me to stay out of Lewis's room, except Lewis. <laughs> Smoke with their day, or can't be lazy. Some of these motion controls, these nice motion controls are a little bit nickety, but it really is involving. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. Yep. Why are we, we're not going out. Why are, we, why are we going out? Thank you. Go on. Thank you. Yeah, PlayStation. Okay, yeah. Ah, weed. Once smelt, never forgotten. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. He was so proud of being Indian. I think for him, it was a way to be something other than just a finch. Keep him proud of your heritage.
Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery, but he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... Okay. Wonder. Uh, oh, right. I asked him to describe it. He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Okay, I am controlling the movement in the labyrinth. And something moves. And... And I'm doing bats, fish, and toads. And things that have not names. That's the dragon. Oh, I'm falling behind on my fish. That's not good. He knew it was all in his head. Okay, that's creepy as fuck. You took it very seriously. Hmm, you always take it in your I head seriously. I hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. Okay, it's gone isometric. You worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss, but he said Lewis had become a model employee, yeah. methodical, tireless, focused. Yep, having worked in a factory job, I can Before believe it. knew Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. Uh, that's a bad sign. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. Ducky! On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. I mean, that's just terrible fucking naming. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. And random dancers. And songs for them to play. This is fucking my rest up. He talked about starting a band. What well, they called Lewis and the Lewises. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won. Well, yeah, he was probably the only fucking candidate. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. 
Don't get stuck in a box there. It became a game for him. <clears throat> He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. Thank God it's not Alexander the Conqueror. Lewis. Then he whacked his ship. St. Louis. <laughs> okay, the spelling is different at least. He started drifting away from our reality. Yeah, but our reality is shit. Why wouldn't you? Minneapolis. <laughs> okay, Until that's one good. day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him. Part of Lewis kept sailing on. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a beautiful prince. I think there's an LGBT representation in this. Prince was on his own quest for sinister serpents. He followed the sound of his. Electric sitar. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. He knew the world was all in his imagination. But he was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. Hard to be a god. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. Hard to argue with him. He began to forget the world we know. See, this is why you should just let the smoke weed. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The power
palace would be packed with his companions. Including the wise Calico who'd insisted on inviting him. That's nice. Um, why are we with the Slender Man people? Why do they dance only slightly better than me? Yeah, yeah I know which way to go, guys. You don't have to point. His prince waited, holding his crown. There's only one thing left to do. Get a new dance. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. The rest I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son, was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. You're a shit psychiatrist. Psychologist. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. I would just like to point out none of that would have happened if I just didn't smoke weed. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. You just thank you. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. But it had to end one way or another. Everything does. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific- I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last... I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom said the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best 
if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning, okay? Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. But I never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. So this is all Cthulhu is doing. This. I got turned around. Hey, I was going right ahead. Fuck you, game. For a while, I wandered. I started seeing things. Oh, that's the revenge, dear. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. Mike. But when I saw Ouch. them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and- Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car. I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. The next morning, the van came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. We both tried to make the best of it. A few years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> Ruined the that rest happened pretty quickly. Otherwise. She got better for a while. And then she didn't. And then I was alone. last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is.
This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you and tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck.
Jesus. Okay. Oh, that was, uh... That was amazing. And... Very fucking upsetting in places. Um... Yeah. Ow. Um... I hope you enjoyed that. Uh... If you did, um, please do like and feel free to subscribe and click the notification button if you want to know when we do some more stuff. Um, yeah, or visit us on theculturingdice.net. Uh, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.